Now, I've been trying to think of a good, simple, yet profound illustration of this old sin nature. Because, see, we've got millions of people all around us that are good people. You can't find a flaw in their lifestyle. They've got a beautiful home. They've got a beautiful family. Their kids are well behaved. They've never cheated anybody out of a dime. He's never been unfaithful to her. She's never been unfaithful to him. And from all outward appearances, they are good people. So, I guess just on the way up, I also tell you I was awfully quiet. But I don't know if this makes sense to you or not, but I'm going to try it. You take an individual, he's got a beautiful horse. Just a beautiful steed, well-trained, well-groomed. And this gentleman is so proud of that animal that he takes him to the show places, puts him through his traces, and of course, well-dressed himself. And it's just a, a beautiful pair to behold, this man and this beautiful horse. And after this particular show, and he's won his purple ribbons, and he's sitting there on that steed, accepting all the applause of what they've accomplished. And that animal is just standing there, perfectly contented, beautiful, being awed at. And then all of a sudden, as if somebody hit that horse with about 10 electric cattle prods, he just explodes. Now that's about the end of the, an um, the analogy because you can never carry spiritual things very far. All right, that beautiful steed I'm telling you about is the picture I'm trying to draw of old Adam. Oh, see, we can groom him. We can control him a lot of times and we can make him just fool the world that, hey, he's okay. But then all of a sudden, something makes old Adam just erupt like this animal hit with a bunch of prods. All right, now here's what I want you to answer me. What am I lightening the cattle prod to? What causes old Adam to suddenly lose his poise, suddenly realize that all that pent up power for wickedness and obstinacy comes to the fore? The law, see, the law. And so people can have themselves all veneered and they can be so beautiful and they've got everything under control. And then one day the law comes. And oh, they've read it, they've memorized it, but they never heard it. But then one day the law comes and it just smashes old Adam and he erupts. See? Now, let me take you to Romans chapter 7. It'll be several programs before we get there, and then we'll look at it more in detail. But see, in Romans chapter 7, is that chapter that the theologians like to batty back and forth, whether it's this or whether it's that, and I'm not going to pay attention to their arguments. I'm just going to look at it the way this old layman sees it. But you come down to Romans chapter 7, verse 9. A verse I imagine that has raised a lot of eyebrows or has caused people to just skim right over it. I don't understand it anyway. All right, now don't forget the story of my beautiful horse. Here is the Apostle Paul under that same set of circumstances. He's got his life religiously, he thinks, under complete control. A religious zealot, admired and looked up to by the whole Jewish religious community. But then all of a sudden, that horse beneath him just erupted, and it changed his life. All right, now look at verse 9 of chapter 7. For I was alive without the law. What does he mean? Hey, he knew the law from the time he was at his mama's knee, let alone Gamaliel. The law had already been in force for 1,500 years before Saul came along. And so he says, I was alive without the law. How could he have been? Because he was part and parcel of that, of that Judaistic society. Well, should I tell you where Saul was? Where most people are today when they read their Bible. They read, but do they understand? Goes right over their head. 
And the same way with Saul. Oh, he thought he knew the law from cover to cover. He thought he knew those Ten Commandments forwards and backwards. But you know what? He had never understood what they said. It was just so many words. But there on the road to Damascus, all of a sudden, as he was confronted with the ascended Lord, all of a sudden now, the law meant what it said to Saul of Tarsus. And what happened? He realized that he was the biggest lawbreaker of all. And that's why he claims that he was such a sinner. He, he had persecuted the believers. But it was when the law finally got a hold of old Saul that he had to recognize, I'm nothing, see? All right, and so what happened? He says, I died. Well, now we know he didn't die physically. So where did he die? Oh, that old Adam, see? Old Adam has to die. And that's the whole theme of this book of Romans, is to deal with that old sin nature that is constantly making man rebel against the very tenets of God. Now, by now you should be able to see what I'm driving at. Is that something that we can do in the energy of the flesh? No. There's no way you can deal with old Adam in the flesh. Because just like the gentleman with his beautiful horse, oh, he's trained him, he's shown him, he's had it applauded, he's gained his rewards over him. But then one day when that horse was finally exploded with an outside source of energy, it showed itself for what it really was. It could be just as cantankerous, it could buck him just as far as the worst bronc could ever do. And that's where our old Adam is. And we have to come to grips with that old Adam. And you can't do it by joining a church. Now, I'm not against the church. Don't ever let anyone get the idea. I'm just using it as an example that that is not what we have to do in order to get right with God. We have to first and foremost deal with this old Adam. And remember, he's in the area of the invisible. You can't lay Adam out on the table. You can't examine him. You can't open him. Old Adam is in the area of the spiritual. He's in the invisible. And consequently, whenever we start dealing in the area of the invisible, there's only one individual, if I may use the word, that knows how to do it. And who is it? The Creator Himself. The Creator Himself is the only one that can delve down into the depths of the Spirit. And so we have to deal with old Adam then through the work and the power of our Creator, of our Savior, and of our Lord. All right, come back to the verses again in Romans chapter 3. So he says, knowing that, uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong chapter. Romans chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that what things soever the law saith, it says to them who are under the law, to the nation of Israel, but that every mouth may be stopped. Now just think about that for a minute, and, and I'm trying to get all my class people over the years prepared, and it happens all the time, for that good neighbor or that good friend or that good customer or that good client who comes in and the conversation comes around these things, and that person will say, well, I'm doing the best I can. I think I'll make it. So don't, don't give me a hassle because I'm pretty good. I'm keeping the commandments. I've joined the church. I'm a good family man. I give. Don't talk to me about my having any problem facing eternity. But you see, they haven't dealt with the core problem, old Adam. And so the law is the only way that God can come to that kind of a person and say, you're guilty, see? Because I don't care how good they may think they have been, I don't care how good their record is, God still looks back and sees that throat like an open sepulcher. He still sees a mouth that's full of cursing. He still sees thought processes that are as immoral as anybody can get. And that's all coming out of old Adam. Another good illustration is back in the bootlegging days, in the 30s. My, you know, they could outlaw alcohol consumption if they wanted to. But you can't stop people from getting it. So the only way they could really deal with the alcohol uh, problem was to do what? Find where it was being made. And that's what they tried, of course. 
Get rid of the stills. If you could get rid of every alcohol still in the world and there wouldn't be any alcohol, you know, you could probably get rid of the problem. Now, it's the same way with old Adam. He, he's just like a still. He just keeps putting it out and putting it out and putting it out. And I don't care how you try to cover it up. I don't care how you try to wallpaper over it. It won't work until we deal with old Adam. All right? Verse 20 then again. So by the deeds of the law, I'm pressing on this and I'm going to keep repeating it yet for a few moments because I don't want anyone to miss the point I'm trying to make. That you cannot approach God on the merit of what you have done. I don't care what denominations teach. I don't care what theologians may teach. We have to come back and realize that God says we can do nothing to merit favor with him. And we're going to see when we get into chapter 4 that, oh, it's so plain. But Abraham, Paul says, believed God. And it was his believing that caused God to call him a righteous man. And then the next verse says, not of works, lest he should boast. You know, I've made the comment to my classes, and I think maybe I said it even on the program a long, long time ago. Have you ever envisioned heaven, and you're there, because of what you did to merit it? You know what I've told people? Everybody will be crossing the street ahead of time because, oh no, I don't want to listen to that guy again. I don't want to listen to him tell me again what he did to get here. It'd be awful, see? But it won't be that way. Because every one of us are never going to be able to say a thing that we have done got us there. It was only the work of a merciful God, see? Alright? So by the law, again, verse 20, is the knowledge or the understanding of our old Adam. The knowledge of sin or the knowledge of our old Adam. And it's the only place you'll find it. Now again, as I was mulling these things over, you see, you don't find language like this back in the Gospels. Jesus didn't get into this part of the whole problem. Jesus, more or less, was just dealing with those Jews un under the law. But you see, now the Apostle Paul is breaking out by Holy Spirit inspiration, of course, and he's delving into the whole human race. Not just the problem in Israel. Not just the problem with Jews. He's delving into the problems of the whole human race. Look at your newspaper today. The whole front page, I don't care whether it's the Tulsa World or the Oklahoma City or whether it's a Timbuktu. Every newspaper in the world today, their whole front page is covered with the same kind of stuff. Murder, rape, terrorism, crime, immorality. Why? Because the world is under the control of, of course, Satan at the top of it, but it's the old Adamic nature, see? And this is what we have to understand. It's old Adam who is at the heart of the sin program. It's old Adam in the realm of the spirit that we have to deal with through the power and the mercy and the grace of God. Thank you for watching Through the Bible with Les Feldick, a weekly Bible study. If you would like more information about the Les Feldick Ministries, a Bible study in your area, or about this program, write to Les Feldick Ministries, Route 1, Box 760, Kinta, Oklahoma, 74552. That's Route 1, Box 760, Kinta, Oklahoma, 74552. Through the Bible with Les Feldick is viewer supported, and your gift is appreciated. Thank you, and be sure to tune in next time for Through the Bible with Les Feldick.